Um, yeah, let's just look to the Lord in prayer. And before that, I just want to read from Proverbs 3 and verse 1. It says, um, My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of day and long life and peace, they will add to you. Um, do not forget, but let your heart keep. And uh, the outcome is that length of days, long life and peace, they will add to you. Um, the next verse Verse 3 says, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Um, really, um, what is amazing is the outcome of God's, God's word. When, um, when we grasp it, not just with our mind intellectually, but um, you know, wholeheartedly. When our heart keeps His command, you know, with our very being, the core of our being, we keep the Word of God, keep His commands. So His commands are not restrictive. His commands are not to um, uh, you know put us down or put us on a leash, but really, it is to release us into life. It says, length of days and long life and peace, um, the laws of God, the commandments of God will add to us. And mercy and truth, God talks about those two qualities and um, uh, the, those two qualities which are part of Him, the very nature of God, mercy and truth. And as we as we keep them close to our heart, it says, write them on the tablet of your heart, engraved on our heart, you know, just so Mercy and truth, uh, you know, what a great combination, truth and at the same time, mercy. Um, and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. So a couple of important keys there for long life, for a good life, for length of days and peace, and also for favor with God and with man. So um, let's just pray and say, you know, tell the Lord, Lord, um, your word, your commands, your precepts. Um, let my heart grasp these. You know, let it be part of my the core of my being. Um, it is not just to you know, please you. It is not just to do that bare minimum. But uh, let it be part of my life, right? Uh, whether people are watching or not, whether I am in a particular environment or not. But uh, God, let your commands. You know, uh, let let my heart grasp your commands in this manner. Right? So let's pray. Father, we, we thank you for your word, God. We thank you that your law is liberating, that uh, your word Lord, truly is life, life-giving, and uh, gives us abundant life. And Master, we, we just want to thank you this morning that um, we get to do this Lord, you give us yet another opportunity to, Lord, grasp your word, Lord, with our heart, Lord, that we, we will follow them with our heart. As your word says, let your heart keep my commands. Yes, Lord, with the core of our being, O oh, Father God, whatever you are commanding, whatever you are exhorting, whatever you are instructing from your word, Lord, um, may our Lord heart grasp this and keep this even as your spirit gives us revelation. And uh, may the outcome that you promised, Lord, be our experience, God. And Father God, even as we read about mercy and truth, Lord, even as that is engraved in our hearts, God, let, let the outcome of that, outcome of doing that, Lord, favor with you, favor with men, high esteem, Lord, let that be our experience. We just want to thank you for these promises and may it be our experience, Father God. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, morning once again to all those who tuned in just now, tuning in just now. <laughs> okay. Um, so last class, we, uh, yeah, last couple of uh, sessions, we've been looking at... Uh, um, leadership, particularly Christian leadership. And uh, last class, uh, we looked at how uh, the life example or the leadership example set by the Lord Jesus. And so we looked at uh, purpose 
And we also looked at um, another quality of uh, the Lord Jesus' leadership, um, you know, the way he modeled leadership, that is, it, he was selfless, not self-serving, and did not have any selfish ambition. Um, though he, he was, um, you know, he, he, he was consumed by the passion, uh, with, with the purpose which God, with the Father had uh, put, uh, you know, sent him with, uh, but he was not self-serving, even in the pursuit of that even in the fulfillment of that, he was not self-serving, right? So, like sometimes, uh, you know, uh, people who are very driven can be self-serving. I'm, I'm driven by that. I, I need to have that. I need to do that at any cost, uh, no matter what is, the, uh, what is the outcome or what is the effect on people. Uh, you know, we can be uh, sometimes when we are very, very driven to a, for the, with the cause. It could be a good cause. Uh, it could be even ministry, but um, uh, when uh, it, it it can be, you know, it can become self-serving if if it's if you're not careful, right? So we looked at how the Lord Jesus was selfless, uh, and uh, we looked at um, uh, the instruction in Philippians two, where uh, um, Paul writes and he says, "Let nothing be done." through selfish ambition or pride, but in humility, you know, you esteem others better. And you look out not only for your interests, own interests, but also for the interests of others. And let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus, who took on the form of bond servant. And, and we saw that, right? So today we'll, uh, we'll continue. As we continue, we look at... Um, the, the third one, the third um, uh, manner in which the Lord Jesus modeled uh, leadership for us, that is in his obedience to the Father. You know, so as a leader, we are called to be obedient. As Christian leaders, you know, we are, we are uh, specifically, we're looking at that as Christian leaders, to be obedient to the Father, to be obedient to God. Now, now we might say, well, that's, that's a given. You know, that's a, uh, oh, let me just um, share the screen. Sorry. Um, you know, we might say that's a, that's a given, you know, why, why, why even talk about it? But, you know, many times we, as believers, we can go our own way and make it look like God's way, right? We can do our own thing and, uh, and make it look like, okay, God has put a stamp of approval on it, right? So, to be willing and to be obedient to the leading of uh, of the Holy Spirit right, in our role as leaders, to be uh, willing to be obedient, to be uh, to be willing and obedient, right? And we know that uh, obedience is uh, well, it is it is a, it is a joyful thing, right? It's 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 uh, it produces joy in us when we obey, but it comes at a cost. Right? It comes at a price. You know, there are times when uh, obedience costs us. Obedience to um, uh, to his uh, to his voice, to his instruction, it comes sometimes at a, at a cost, at a at a personal cost. You know, as a personal sa sacrifice. Uh, and we know, also know that obedience is not always comfortable. Right? It's not or not always in the realm of the familiar. It's not always in the realm of our comfort zone. You know. Uh, it is uh, many times to step out of our comfort zone, right? to uh, to take that step of faith, um, and uh, particularly, you know, as believers, um, uh, this is even more so. Right? We we hear the voice of the Father, we hear the voice of the Shepherd, and uh, and sometimes all that we have are his are his words. Right, and uh, and we we step out in faith and carry out what he has asked us to do. Right, um, a couple of scriptures here, Hebrews ten verse seventeen, where um, it's a testimony of of the Lord. Behold, I have come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do your will, O God. Right? And again in Philippians two says he humbled himself and became obedient. To the point of death, even the death of the cross. This talks about the Lord Jesus, how he was obedient to the will of the Father. Okay. The thing is for us to know, to, for us to be aware, um, 
aware of the father's heart right? aware of the will of the father right? will of god aware of the voice of the being sensitive to the voice of the holy spirit and um, and and to be uh, and to be obedient obedient is the second part of it really knowing him knowing his heart knowing his nature is the first part of it right so um so the thing is to make obedience um uh, both obedience and knowing him uh, it comes as part of the same coin right both sides of the same coin to, to, to the thing for us is to make it not an event you know uh in my own life i i know that there were times when i wanted a decision right it was a significant decision it was about a job change and uh, and you know i spent time just fasting and praying and when waiting to hear the voice of god and i just wanted to make sure i didn't want to make it um you know make a, a mistake and and god spoke god pointed out okay here are things uh because of which you need to change and you need to move and and so on so um it was clear but then uh, i realized now looking back i realized that i had made hearing god's voice and obeying um obeying his voice an event and not a continuum not a you know a lifestyle not an everyday thing right so uh, to really delight in his presence to hear him and uh, to uh, to to want to uh, hear his opinion his choice his say in the matter right so let that be a continuous thing right well the lord has uh, given us our mental faculty the lord has given us our abilities uh to for us to he has given us his principles right and and these are also another aspect of you know uh important aspect of obedience where we know this is what the word of god says very clearly very plainly we go ahead and do it right and uh we also go by the presence the principles and the presence of god where specifically god gives his rema god god's uh, you know uh, quickens his word to us quickens these principles to us uh, to our hearts and we step out and we do that right so being obedient being aware of the will of the father being sensitive to the voice of the holy spirit and being obedient right uh, as leaders it's um, it's it is it's an everyday thing and right. as uh, as believers and uh, very specifically as leaders um may it be an everyday thing this is how the lord jesus modeled for us and and he says uh, you know whatever i see the father uh do i do it and uh, the words that i speak they are the words of the father right so um pointing us or pointing us to the fact that we need to have a close walk with him you know we cannot um uh, slip up in this area right to have a close walk with him to to not compromise in this to um to be to be uh, aware of his voice uh, and it's a privilege you know it's our privilege it is uh, to hear his voice it is our privilege to know the principles of god we um, the precepts we we have it right with us we have it before us so may we uh, engage you know with the word of god um and not really neglect uh, the word of god okay uh, one of the things that we see is uh, in mark chapter 4 um let me just read that and then we'll move on to the next one mark chapter uh, mark chapter 4 uh it's a parable of the sower and um in mark mark chapter 4 after he explains the parable the lord the lord says um verse 24 mark 4 and verse 24 take heed what you hear with the same measure you hear you use it will be measured to you and to you who hear more will be given for whoever has to him more will be given and whoever does not have even what he has will be taken away from him right. so uh verse 24 very clearly it says take heed what you hear and how you hear you know, with what you hear in the sense the the measure that you use uh may it be a big measure 
right? As uh, it depends on us. So the Lord puts the onus on us. You know, you draw near, and I will draw near to you. Now the same, the measure that you use, it will measure to you. So, so let's go before Him with a big measure and say, "Okay, God, you know, I, I need that. I, I want you. I want. I want to hear. Uh, I want a big measure." Right. So um, that's something that we see, and something for us to emulate and follow. And then, particularly about uh, the timing of God, the will of God, um, uh, and everything is is there for us, and He has kept it for us. And let's not make it an event. It becomes a, you know, it becomes a formula. It becomes a hit or miss when we uh, when we consider it an event, or you know, when we look at it as an event or a one time thing. But if we make it part of our life as a believer, you know, it's a uh, something that's uh, day in and day out uh, to walk intimately with him um, and uh, it's uh, it's you know we, we will be walking like Jesus we will be providing leadership uh, in the manner that Jesus did right okay um, you know uh, and several examples of uh, you know uh, not only in ministry but also uh, in uh, in the workplace, right? in the workplace, uh, in business, uh, in uh, you know, in in the you know unchurched settings, right? Quote unquote, secular settings, um, where uh, people have testified and said, okay, uh, being obedient, hearing the voice of God, being obedient, uh, receiving wisdom from Him. And being able to successfully carry it out in several situations, right? Maybe some difficult, very difficult situations um, requiring the wisdom of God. But this one aspect of wanting to know His will and being obedient, right? James talks about, you know, um, let us not be hearers only, but also doers. Now, this obedience requires faith, this obedience requires courage. Um, many times, you know, as as even as leaders, right, we hear something, hear the voice of God, instruction, and that requires courage. Right, uh, that requires going beyond the voice of fear or rising above the voice of intimidation um, or anxieties and and obeying God. Right, so. Um, uh, yeah, so let's move on to the next one. Any any thoughts on this? Uh, any examples that you can share about uh, obeying God as uh, maybe in a workplace, uh, hearing the voice of God and obeying him and how that, uh, you know, maybe helped, how that solved? Uh, maybe we can hear a couple of examples and then go on uh, to the next one. Would anyone like to share? obedience. Yeah, go ahead, Shri Kumar. Thank you, Pastor. Um, when I was working um, in my uh, in my company, um, I was a senior because uh, because I was a believer. I never used to mingle with my bosses who used to uh, go for these weekend parties and uh, uh, you know uh, these all these things. So I was actually. Uh, separated from my uh, from my officers and my teammates also because even my team team members used to go and enjoy the weekend parties and all. So I was like uh, someone who was like uh, who was separated from their groups, but uh, by God's grace and His wisdom, uh, my work was always appreciated, and my manager always come and always ask uh, you know the <clears throat> the the seek the the uh, the help whenever he was needed and he always found that there is a wisdom is working in me and uh, he asked me the, the secret also so i always shared about the jesus about him mm. and uh, but uh, there was a time where even though i was appreciated there were so many other juniors who were so close to the managers and uh, uh, senior managers so and uh, even though my promotion was something which i was supposed to get my second promotion where uh, uh, where they have actually 
uh, declared my promotion, but they have not released my paper. And I was supposed to wait for six, more than, uh, not six months, but more than one year. I was just waiting for my confirmation letter, which they have not released. And uh, I was supposed to, and they have promoted someone else. My junior, they promoted, and it was literally a very painful thing for me and that was a time where uh, you know my marriage was also fixed and it was so um, it was so um, you know painful for me and i said god uh, i want to quit the job i want to leave the job i cannot continue this uh, here in bangalore and because i am the first uh, christian in my family there was no such support also for me and um, and uh, uh, there are so many other uh, things were there and uh, then i then the as you said, like the Holy Spirit uh, continuously prompting me, stay, stay in the company, stay in the company, stay. And it was very, very hard for me every time when I uh, go to my office and uh, that anger suddenly used to come inside me. Then I put a piece of paper in front of my laptop uh, system that, you uh, know, that anger is not good. I have to control my anger. And I, I, I continue with that and I work there for, uh, um, and, uh, more than one year because I was just obedient to the voice of the Holy Spirit, and uh, because I was so tempted to leave the job, leave the job, mm -hmm. leave the job. And uh, but fortunately, I was uh, they 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 actually put me into a very big project where which which got successfully, um, which was uh, which was which was successful, and uh, then they decided for my uh, second promotion, mm -hmm. and um, and. Uh, they were almost uh, they were ready with the paper and uh, <clears throat> my after my appraisal and suddenly i got a dream uh, uh, i got a dream where i i saw that uh, you know um, i saw that uh, somebody is telling me my, my manager came in my dream and said that you have to leave the company because there is no future so i was so uh, wondering that uh, why uh, this dream coming to me when i am supposed to get my promotion and uh, why this dream then after a few months, um, again, I got a similar dream where, uh, you know, uh, mm. same dream where it says that uh, <clears throat> uh, um, the same thing that there is no future for your company, leave the company. Mm. Then I, I, I told my wife about this and she said, maybe God wants you to uh, come to the full-time ministry. I said, no way, I am not going to come to the full-time ministry mm. because I don't want to be in the full-time ministry. Then uh, she only suggested me, why can't you take a 21 days of fasting and uh, why can't you uh, see God? And the first day when uh, the day for one itself, um, I thought, OK, I will go. And uh, the, in my church, there was a uh, service was happening and um, and I was in prayer. And suddenly that servant of God who was a visitor and he pointed out me and he said to me very clearly that uh, God is God wants you to serve him now. And uh, whatever you are doing, you have to leave. And it was a confirmation for me. And uh, then I continually pray, continuously prayed. And uh, and there was there was there was so, so confusion that the promotion is ready, and uh, God's calling is there. So mm. what we do? It was a confusion. Then my wife asked me that what you should do. Then what we were going to do? I said uh, uh, what God is telling me we should obey to God and I, I went and I told my manager this is the thing then he told me that this, your paper is ready you are doing a very foolish decision mm. uh, you are actually moving to a next level and a senior level and uh, at this point of time uh, you know you are doing leaving the job is uh, is uh, is something you are doing a foolish thing mm -hmm. I was silent because I cannot say anything about Jesus at that time <laughs> so I quietly mm -hmm. resigned the job and as you said I you know sometimes it's very hard but uh, we mm. have to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit and I left to the job and uh, then I dedicated myself for the full-time ministry. Thank you, Pastor. That's why mm. Thank you, Sheikh. So how many years ago was this? Uh, this Pastor, it is um, nine years. Nine years back. Okay. Yes, Pastor. Wonderful. Right. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Praise God. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, the fact that uh, obedience comes, you know, um, I mean, requires uh, sometimes us stepping into the you know, not so familiar and uh, not so comfortable, and and also you know it's uh, um, I mean it's uh, it's tough to explain, but uh, when we know that we know that we know that God has spoken, and uh, then we step out and do it. Right? Any other example of uh, you know uh, being a leader, uh, maybe in ministry or uh, you know maybe. Uh, 
uh, leading a team where uh, you've had to you know lean back lean into god and his wisdom and you obeyed and how it turned out um any example uh, any experience okay okay yeah, can i yeah, go ahead sir? yeah prabhu kashu sure. yeah uh, praise lord man uh, actually um, my calling to ministry was like uh, many many years ago um, uh, while i was studying itself um in the school itself i got a calling and uh, i had uh, many of the servants of god has prophesied about full time ministry for me but um, i was like keen to study further and even my father was uh, like very keen for me to get higher studies and then i completed my mba and uh, later that uh, i continued to work in corporate world um so i wasn't uh, like i had very ups and downs in my like uh, corporate life and uh, in the in those 10 years like i was in very higher positions as well um, i was like uh, um, working in um, healthcare um, healthcare uh, uh, you know company uh, in i was posted in kenya um, as a country manager as well for a couple of uh, like months and then so very highs and lows but though i was earning well i i had good uh, you know reputation i had all the things which i a person wants um, but uh, there was no peace uh, i remember a day when i was in kenya and uh, i was like after uh, like 12 to 14 hours of work i came back and i was uh, laying in my bed and uh, thinking about like what i am doing with my life am i happy or am i supposed to do so that time i like uh, stood up and and pray to god so god talked to me about uh, like there are greater things in life which you have to do so uh, yeah. i just asked god for like clear vision and clear um, things and so uh, there were colleagues in the kenya because i don't know anyone personally in kenya but th- there were many christian um, friends uh, which god uh, helped me to so uh, most of them are were my colleagues so we, we used to like, discuss you know verses scriptures and uh, we used to discuss a lot so from that day onward like things become like changing you know but one more thing was that my superiors um, uh, were more of them were like alcoholic uh, and uh, they want me to uh, spend time with them as most of the you know expats do and have weekends but i want to go to church and have fellowship with the people and all that so not only in kenya uh, pastor but uh, in everywhere wherever i work i had this problem i had faced this problem many a times because i want uh, you know uh, leave on sundays or whenever the prayer meetings because i used to be in ministry for like Uh, 22 years i was uh, a, a translator i was doing the job of a gospel translator and gospel ministers <clears throat> so many times i had been called by servants of god to do the translation work but my bosses would don't want me to have a leave there so in that uh, situations i have to like take a call so ma- many times like to obey the god so i have to take a risk but again it paid off and eventually um, by as the days came uh i had no peace like i want to do ministry but uh, uh family responsibilities and everything was there but soon or later god uh, like there were uh, there was a meeting going on conducted and a servant from like uh, us and and from kerala came and they prophesied about me and my wife like uh, you have been called for the ministry clearly and you have to call for full time ministry not for part time so you have to dedicate yourself this is the last call so we were like uh, uh, in so much of dilemma whether to forward or not because uh, i have i am the eldest son and i have to take care of the family as well but uh, somehow we uh, you know stuck on that uh, lead so later uh, some day uh, it happened from that day uh, onwards uh, i don't want actually the reason was like i don't want to leave my uh, parents and go out and you know uh, i can't uh, leave separately with the, Uh, without them so uh, i was taking a step but uh, <laughs> things uh, you know turned away and uh, there were small disputes in the families you know uh, we were like not on 
uh, good terms as these all things are uh, happening so i was in a very you know depressed mode and i was praying and you know seeking god and some day and one particular fine day god uh, talked to me clearly that uh, i had been called you for my ministry and you are you know seeking other things in the world so you won't succeed until you obey my voice so that particular day i dedicated myself and like me and my wife both dedicated ourselves for the complete ministry and uh, we started seeking god and in his ministry full time and since that day onwards uh, i had complete peace in my life and uh, there were many um, uh, situations came across in my life where i had to choose to whether to obey god or not. but uh, yes by god's grace it is very challenging when <laughs> when we are in god and we have to please our bosses and at the same time please please god so i had to choose either 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 the worldly boss or the or the god so many a times uh, over the two and a half decades i had faced this problem but yes um now i can say um by obeying god yes it, it is it is a blessing and now um yeah. we are like in the ministry thank you pastor for this right thanks thank you rabita thank you so much yeah so um so the, the, i mean i think these were a couple of examples where the lord asked you know them to move out but sometimes uh, you know the lord asks us to stay and uh, and that's also you know uh, sometimes that's a difficult thing but where you want to move and the lord says stay right uh but the fact is that um, you know, you know uh, as leaders you know as we are leading others as we are influencing others um for their good right um to make a difference in their lives that for us to lean into god for us to um be obedient and be willing to hear his voice on the matter it could be about um, you know it, it could be about everything and anything about the, maybe about the team maybe about resolving conflicts uh, maybe about owning up and saying uh, you know i was wrong uh, it could be uh, i don't know maybe a new direction and everything we have this wonderful privilege of receiving from god and and uh, and and the thing is uh, sometimes what happens is um, you know uh, maybe you know like a church setting or it could be a church or ministry setting or even otherwise right uh, certain things that um, you know that we do we may not really include god and we're going to look at that we're going to look at that whole aspect of planning and uh, you know uh, though it seems like a very natural exercise that uh, that when we include god in it that we need to actually factor in you know uh, and uh, uh, go uh, go according to his his plan and his will so uh, many times we exclude god from many of our activities and no no uh, maybe unknowingly knowingly you know we exclude him but the fact is that we need to include him right yeah um, rupa you wanted to say something yeah rupa go ahead um rupa you wanted to say something i you are muted so sir just 2 minutes sir thank you as okay, you want ahead, to, we are in a very small uh, remote place in here in anantapur it's a small town a small village called batalpalli where my husband used to work it's a secular setup hospital and uh, when god called us to start a home church in that place my husband got a very good opportunity in australia usually they don't offer uh, such high posts in uh, other countries for indian uh, doctors but he could uh, he got a very good position in australia but uh, when we waited on the lord and prayed god clearly said don't go you have to stay here so we have we just um, stayed back in uh, india and batalpalli and it was a very tough journey and uh, we have we had to move out of that place after that and it was very tough but i i know that god's plan always not um, as we think uh, um, the blessings and all they are different people are very important to god mm-hmm. when god wants us to make impact on people and and he has handed over certain people to us he wanted us he wants us to stay there put 
whatever may come i think mm -hmm. that's what i we have learned wow. and uh, last year also uh, my husband had to move to delhi and afterwards he moved to bangalore is in different mission hospitals now mm -hmm. uh, helping the mission hospitals surgeries and all i never we, we were never uh, separate uh, lived separately uh, wherever he went any mission hospital he always went but this time god spoke to us very clearly I, i said how can i stay here lord i want to follow and go with my husband he said if this is only for a short period i will bring him back you have to stay here mm -hmm. so i had to stay back and god is uh, working in our lives and mm. i think sometimes even after starting the home church my our children are in three different places and if sunday only on sundays we are uh, allowed to meet them in hostels but it was very rare very rare occasion i could not leave the uh, uh, new congregation and just go and meet them mm. so that way also uh, i i missed being with the we missed being with the children mm. like that but they understood and it was a blessing that way thank you pastor well thank you and thank you for all the sacrifices you've made um, you and your husband and uh, yeah our prayer is that um, you know, we'll be back together soon i think uh, it should be sooner than <laughs> later you know um, yeah and uh, god is true to his word so yeah so we pray for that as well Okay. yeah why don't we just pray for uh, you know prabhaka for shri kumar for rupa uh you know for uh, yeah let's just pray asking god to um, you know continue to pour out his spirit upon them that they will continue to you know uh, be influencers where god has placed them uh be it uh, you know i think all of them are in some form of ministry so yeah we just pray for god's wisdom and god's uh, leading and guidance right let's uh, pray would anybody like to pray for them um anyone oh, head uh, say father we bless you we thank you for your sons and daughter we thank you lord for what you have committed to their hands we thank you for the assignment you've given to them we thank you for your grace that has sustained them to this moment we thank you lord for it is you who is in us both to will and to do of your good pleasure you have given that to them lord we thank you because you will keep them to the end and they will finish this assignment they will finish till the end and it will bring you glory we yeah. pray that as they stand lord in obedience to the call you've given to them strengthen them the more and lord fortify them on all sides and lord we pray that you will validate your call in their lives that results lord will show indeed you called them and that your name will be glorified in their ministries in the name of jesus thank you everlasting father in jesus name we have prayed amen 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 thank you say thank you yeah um just one thought is that um that we will all continue to know the heart of the father right that we will continue to know god's heart that we will continue to um know his nature as the holy spirit reveals to us that um, you know in our zeal to be obedient that we will not be swayed by uh, you know popular opinion like even in 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 church or you know uh, how should i put it like even in ministry you know there can be certain things that are cultural there can be certain things that are that are popular that seems that that is the trend right uh, and uh, you know it could be either thing you know it could be uh, either in terms of um, even when it comes to sacrifice that um, that it will not be a fleshly thing that it will we will know god intimately and that we would know his heart that we would know his nature we would hear his voice and uh, and be completely surrendered to to doing that 
right? Uh, rather than even, you know, e even in a, you know, like a church or Christian ministry kind of a setting that we would not be swayed by what is the, you know, what is the trend? Um, yeah, so um, that is something that I just wanted to share when it comes to obedience, right? Um, especially, you know, like, um, I know all three uh, are about church and ministry and so on, but uh, uh, but also it is it is equally true that the Lord might want us to stay, you know, maybe in the company that you're working and uh, to be a uh, to be a voice there, right? To um, stay with the business that you're doing, to be a voice there. I'm saying it's both are, you know, uh, from God, and so it's not that one is less important than the other right uh, like for me personally it was to it was to move away from uh, from working as a professional in a corporate in a, in a, from the corporate world and move away so uh, for me it was that but um, and i know that uh, uh, um, you know that it is equally important it is equally true that god might want us to stay where we are and be a voice there and uh, yeah and like um, like I was saying, you know, sometimes it's it's difficult to stay, right? So, um, so may God give the strength, wisdom, and um, and maybe continue to seek His will, right? But maybe continue to know Him intimately, um, so that it, we will not be swayed by what we see around, not by comparison, um, and not even by what is popular church culture. Culture, right? Um, I say this because um, from the like the from the uh, uh, early church background or early I would say the, the fellowship that I was part of you know for it was uh, like working being a voice or being um, uh, you know as a working professional to be a believer to be a voice there to be to be a, even an apostle or a pastor in that workplace kind of a thing was, was something unheard of you know for us the greatest thing was that uh, you know you was full time ministry so called full time ministry but then began to understand that uh, when we look at the lives of joseph and uh, daniel and um, and all these wonderful people god used you see that they they worked in the courts of the king they were in the administrative you know kind of services or civil services as we would call it and they did that uh, and uh, they they were obedient Right, so, so, so may God give us that understanding and the wisdom. Right, okay, that was great. Thank you, thank you so much for sharing, guys. Um, it was quite an eye opener. Uh, it's amazing the kind of sacrifices that you have made. Yeah. Um, okay, let's let's move on to another uh, thing which we've already seen before. The fact that uh, I think we also already did an exercise. Also, you know. Um, uh, as a leader, uh, to be a servant, right? We looked at that earlier. So I'm just going to read that verse again, just to reiterate what the Lord Jesus said, and then we'll move on. Um, Matthew 20, 25 to 28. But Jesus called them to himself and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. And those who are great exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you. But whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. And whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life a ransom for many. Right. So uh, we have this leadership, leadership example uh, as, a, as a servant leader that the Lord has uh, you know, um, uh, kept before us. Not an option, but he says, you know, it shall not be so with you. So uh, may the Lord give us wisdom again to to do it in the right manner, right? So people have ro roles and responsibilities, especially in a formal setting in an organization, that in our bid to be servant leaders, uh, let's do that in a wise manner, right? Um, may the Lord give us wisdom. Okay, so I, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, and then let's move on to the next one. So as leaders, we are called to sacrifice, right? And uh, it's interesting that all three shared about sacrifice, um, you know, just now. So let's look at a few um, uh, scriptures. Hebrews 2, 10, 
uh, and Levin, for it was fitting for him, for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons to glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings for both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all of one, for which reason he's not ashamed to call them brethren. So there was, um, uh, you know, uh, in that perfection, uh, there was suffering that was involved, right? Uh, there was this discomfort that was involved. So we, we see that. Hebrews 5, who, uh, verse 7, who in the days of his flesh, when, we had, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear, Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Uh, and having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Now, of course, the, the suffering that the Lord Jesus went through was unique and, uh, uh, you know, the, and the nature of it was uh, unique and uh, 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 cannot be compared with any other. And also, we we are called to walk in his, uh, you know, walk in his steps, which means that there will be, you know, sufferings, there will be difficulties, hardships, um, but not to the extent of what he suffered. Okay, so there is a difference, right? Um, so, as leaders, uh, we there, there is always this element of sacrifice. You know? um, when we look at sacrifice, we see that, um, let me just put this up. When we look at sacrifice, we see that um, many times we associate sacrifice with something that we give or something that we give up or something that we do away with, right? So maybe it's something to do with time. Maybe it's something to do with uh, uh, some resources that we have. Uh, so we, we give up something, that we give up something that we have a right to, right? It, it is not that it's... Uh, it's illegal or it's uh, it's not right um, and uh, you know it is something absolutely fine you know uh, but we willingly give up in order to pursue uh, being a, a leader in order to fulfill our role as uh, as leaders so we give up willingly we set aside something willingly and uh, it uh, so we kind of pay a cost right, to following the footsteps of the Lord in order to be uh, leaders. Right? So, um, so this aspect of giving up, I think, is is very very uh, we are familiar with. You know, when whenever we say sacrifice, giving up, uh, letting go uh, of something, it, it's it's we are familiar with that. But sacrifice also has another aspect of it, which is to take on, right? Um, to take on willingly, to take on maybe a responsibility, maybe to take on certain tasks, um, which again, we we don't have to, right? We don't have to, it's not thrust upon us, we don't have to, and it's perfectly fine, right? But, but in order to fulfill our call or in order to fulfill that role and responsibility as leaders, we take on something willingly. And now that is also uh, an aspect of uh, leadership. Right? So when you look at sacrifice, it is both something that we give up, something that we let go of, and also something that we take on, something that we take up willingly. Right? And uh, and both are important. And um, and the thing is, this you know, sometimes we, uh, when we when it comes to sacrifice, um, you know, one person's sacrifice in one part of the world, um, and and the call and everything that they are pursuing could be very very different from another person's sacrifice. Right? So there's no need to compare and say, oh, this sacrifice is greater. Definitely, you know, in natural in the natural realm, and when we when we when we reason it out, it seems that way. There's a high price, it's a high call, but uh, there's no need to compare and say, "Hey, this is this is better, or this is greater, or this is higher." Right? Um, it is a sacrifice. Right? Um, okay, so we'll stop here. We'll take a break, 
and then we'll we'll come back uh, to continue